something like this. All righty. I'm going to give you a definition of a derivative here because we can approach this in a lot of different ways. Okay? Definition. This is the main part of the course, I would say. You know? It, it, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's the meat and potatoes of the course. We'll get to the potatoes, but this is the meat. Okay? Derivative. This is why they call the course differential calculus. All right. Hmm. Let me say f prime of a is equal to the limit as x goes to a f of x minus f of a over what? x minus a. This is known as the derivative of the function f at the location x is a. And over here, this is the notation. That's like f prime, okay? But this here is the definition of it. There's actually a few definitions. They're equivalent. There's a lot of meaning behind what you're really looking at, by the way. If I just say to you guys, just from the start, right? Do you guys happen to know what, what this is here right in the middle? This is known as something. You know what this is? That's called a difference quotient. That has a lot of meaning in math and science, just that, that, that ratio, that difference quotient. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna study all the little details. But I'm just gonna start off by giving you a definition, okay? You can do that. You know, teaching math and calculus is, a, is, a, is an art. It's not a science, it's an art. So, you know, that's, that portion's called the difference quotient. And in pre-calculus, you might have seen some difference quotients, you know. Um, this is kind of like the, at, this is kind of like a rate of change, you know. This is thought of, just so you guys know, hey, Mr. Judge, is that the change in Y values over the change in X values? Yeah, we're going to get to that, all the little details. But I'm just going to first start off by showing you the definition and how it relates to what you've been studying. What have you guys been studying, by the way? What's that? Limits. Has anybody been studying any limits? Have you been looking at that homework? <laughs> All right. Here we go. You guys ready? I'm going to share with you guys. We're going to get started on this. They're going to give you like a function. Here's an example. We're going to give you a nice function like 2x plus 3. Okay? Let's say what's the derivative of the function at maybe zero? F prime of, of zero here, okay? That's what they want to know. What's the derivative of the function at zero? How do I know it's a derivative? Let's say F prime. How do I know they want to, to have it at zero? This is, this is the function and this is going to be at zero. This is the A value, okay? And then you're going to tell me, Mr. Judge, how do I do this? You know what I'm going to say? Use the definition. F prime of 0 is the limit as x goes to what? 0. Do you guys see what's going on there? So far, so good? Now, I, I always write this down this way. F of x minus f of 0 over x minus what? Zero. I'm using this definition because now, here, a is what number? Zero. Zero. Okay, you guys with me on that? what I just did? All I did was with this definition, use the value for a to be zero. So, you know, you can, get, you can do that here. Now, simplify this. You might say, 
what is what do you mean by simplify okay this is a limit x goes to zero of what what's f of x 2x plus 3 good job this is going to be get used to this is that the function yes and then put minus what 2 times 0 plus 3 over x minus 0 plug that in okay that's functional evaluation what did you guys do you plugged in what 0 right in here for your function, okay? So f of zero, two times zero plus, plus three, and so simplify, right? So I'm just gonna do it this way. Limit x goes to zero, this will be what? Two x plus three minus, what's this two times zero plus three? Is that, is that minus three? Over what? Isn't x minus zero just x? What's going on to those threes? Do you guys know what's going on with those threes? They cancel. So you have 2x over x. What's going on here? Yeah, that limit here is just the number 2. 2 is a constant. Remember we told you about that, that property? What's the limit of a constant? Do you guys remember? It's a constant. Do you guys know what you just found? Mark this day on your calendar. <laughs> you found the derivative of a function at the pl at two. I'm sorry, at zero. So I don't I don't write f prime I don't keep this f prime of zero. You can if you like, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you can. But you know this is this is how you really find the derivative of a function at a value zero. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, not too bad, not too bad. I just want to give you guys a note here, okay. We're gonna we're gonna this is this is more arithmetic ish because you're looking at the value of a at zero. It's more arithmetic ish. Let's give you guys a little bit more algebraic approach. You say, what do you mean the algebraic? A little more algebra. This was arithmetic. They might say, what's f prime at some arbitrarily arbitrary a value? They didn't give you a particular value. And so now you say, I have to find f prime of a. Yes, how do I do it? What is the definition? It's f of x minus f of a over what? x minus a. I just wrote down the definition. Okay, so what you're going to need to do now, plug in f of x, find this, and then find this. So what is f anyway? It's 2x plus 3, isn't it? Do you see that? They gave you f. So this here is really going to be what? It's 2x plus 3. So this is f. Do you guys know what f of a is? How do we get f of a? What do you guys think? Go back to f. Here it is. Plug in now what? A. What's that going to be? F of A is going to be what? 2A plus what? 3. Functional evaluation. You guys remember that input output? Input output, function evaluation. Okay. All right. Here we go. You guys ready? Two X plus three minus what? 
2a plus 3 over x minus a. This is where the algebra comes in. Right in here. All right. What's your limit? x goes to a. Isn't that 2x plus 3 minus what? 2a minus 3, everything over x minus a. Don't you distribute right in here? Do you guys remember? So what happens now? With the algebra, what happens? Limit x goes to a. Doesn't the 3s go away? Now you have 2x minus what? 2a over x minus a. Do you guys see where we're going with this? What does this mean? Can I factor out the 2 and you get x minus a over, right? Factor out the 2. What goes on? Cancel the x minus a. And so, ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. This is going to be the limit. x goes to a of, again, the constant 2. So what is this here? See that? What's the limit of a constant again? Constant. Let's draw our conclusion. The derivative at any value a equals 2. So the derivative of the function at any a is really the number what? 2. And there it is. So this makes sense. You go, why does that make sense? You guys know, if I plug in 0, didn't we get 2? If I plug in a 1, what do you get? 2? If I plug in a negative 3, what do I get as a derivative? Derivative is always 2. That's all. What do you guys think of that? Is that okay? Is that easy peasy? Well, it's the first time you guys ever seen the definition of a derivative. Maybe. Maybe. Can I tell you guys a little secret? Has anybody ever taken calculus before? Just raise your, hand, raise your hands high and proud. You've taken calculus one before. Okay. You know, when my, da my daughter, you know, she, my daughter Ashley, I have two. You know, my daughter, she actually finished a degree in math. She majored in math. I never told her to do that. I didn't, I'm not that dad, you know. I mean, you, you go home and I'm not that father. Um, you better do this. Otherwise, you know, I mean, I, I am kind of. But not in terms of math. I don't. I didn't raise my daughter. You better major in math, otherwise I don't love you anymore. Some parents behave do that. I don't. Okay. Well, you know. But she decided to do it anyway. She wanted to major in math. You say why did she? She said it was easy. <laughs> you know why she said that? Because it is. She always had her father who could intervene. You know what do you mean intervene? There was rules at home. You know, if she if she had a math question, I can answer it. But there's a danger. The danger is I wanted her to first ask her teachers, get the help at school first, and if she couldn't get it, then come to me. Does that make sense? Because otherwise, when I go home, I'll be teaching her all day long. And who wants to do that? Not me. So there were rules. So the more story is this. She took calculus one in high school. She took calculus two. Or calculus A, B, and then B, C. You guys, whatever that is, right? She took those courses. And she got A's. But when she took the AP exam, she got threes because she didn't study for them. And that's the truth. Even though I got in her. Study for those AP exams. I'm not going to pay for a calculus class. You go to college. You better, you better get that good grade. I'm not going to pay. What did she do? She decided to do other things like 
band leadership and all that other nonsense. I'm in leadership, Dad. Really? What are you doing in leadership? We're going to clean the school. Oh, I'm in band. I'm in um, choir leadership. What are you going to do? Go sing for the trustees. That's not leadership. That's slavery. <laughs> are they paying you? No. You're working for free. That's my daughter. She had her own ideas, like sometimes kids do. So she got threes. And then she went to Cal Poly and she says, Dad, what, should I, what math class should I take? You know what I told her? Mm -mm. I said, Ashley, I know where your skill sets are. I want you to take that pre-calculus trig course because they're the pre-calculus of the whole house trig. That's where I want you to start. She said, okay. By then she finally listened to me. She, she realizes, I guess her dad knows a little bit of something. She said, okay. I said, and I'll pay for it, I guess. So she started in, you know, the, like a pre-calculus trick course, even though she went all the way to calculus A, B, B, C. You know why I, I did that? Because I really knew where her algebra skills were. I really knew where her skills were. I could just look at her, and I know. I can look and know. Um, based on the questions she asked and what she was going on, I knew where she was at. And I knew what she was taught and what she wasn't taught. So I knew, you know what, um, you know, you're not learning what I teach so I think this is what you should do. And so she did. And as a consequence, she did very well. She got an A. Then she did Calculus 1 again, got an A. Calculus 2 again, she got an A. And she says, Dad, there was so much they didn't even teach me. I am so glad I did it the way you wanted me to. And as a consequence, she now said, I want to major in math because it's easy. You see, there's a lot of students that you may not realize, already had calculus, and they're taking calculus one. They already had it, and they've taken it. And it's good that they are. It's not a bad thing. It's very good. They're doing the same advice I gave my own daughter. She majored in math as a consequence because she felt it was easier now. Now she understood. So it's kind of an interesting thing. you know. I didn't take calculus twice. I had to take it only once. I had to learn it, and I had to keep reviewing, and I had to keep doing the work. But all the little things I'm showing you guys here, these are things I really had to learn myself. So I know that. So, you know, you want to do your homework when? Every day. And more of a big deal, right? Uh, on that worksheet, if you, if you look at it, you know, here's what we're saying. We say a function f is what again? Differentiable. Where is it differentiable at? At A, if what's the story? This derivative exists. What do you think it means to exist? We mean that this has to be what? Finite. There's a value L. Okay? So if that function satisfies the definition, meaning the limit exists, it's finite. That's what they mean by that. That's what they mean by existing. It has to be finite, right? Then we could say the function is differentiable at that location, at the point. And what I, what I want to go back and do now for you guys is the following. Let me kind of do something. Let's see if I have that here. Uh, no, no, no. Let's take a look at this function here, okay? You see this function, the one over x function, okay? Um, we're gonna take a look at the vertical asymptote. So where do you have a vertical what? Asymptote at, where do you have that at? Do you guys know? Where is it gonna be? At x equals what? Zero, right in here. Okay, what do you guys know this function can't what? What's the problem with this function? X can't be zero. Is that true? So I want to share with you guys something extremely interesting about that function here. We're going to use the definition here. 
we're going to try to determine if this function is differentiable at the vertical asymptote. So we're going to determine if f prime of 0 what? exists for f of x is 1 over what? x. Okay. Now you might say, is that asking for the function being differentiable at 0? Yes. All right. So we're going to try to see if this function is differentiable at that vertical asymptote. All right. So you say, how do I do that? Well, you're going to use your definition, right? So we can say, what's f prime of 0 equal to? Well, that's the limit. As x goes to 0, f of x minus f of 0 over what? x minus 0. And you go, wait a minute, Mr. Judge. I seem to have a problem already. You might say, isn't f of 0 undefined? And I'll say yes. So you might say, well, how do we kind of look at this? Use the A definition here, OK? So we're going to use this. This is A. And this is A. So, all right, so now, and then this is going to be at A, so, okay. So, okay, limit. X goes to A, the function is 1 over X minus 1 over A, everything over X minus A, okay? So this is called finding the formula for the derivative at a value A. This is at the vertical asymptote. All right, so we're still going to have an issue. You might say, what's the real issue right in here? Here's my issue, ladies and gentlemen, right in here. If you try to find that limit, what's the problem? Don't you get what? 1 over a minus 1 over a over a minus a. And what do you end up with? 0 over 0. Is that what you guys get? What's the story with this? This is called being what? indeterminate indeterminate so what are you guys supposed to do if it's indeterminate you guys remember what do we say we always want to do if it's indeterminate you're going to use what here you're going to use algebra. All righty, we're going to use algebra. So when we use algebra here, what's going to happen? All right, we have a minus what? x over, over what? over ax divided by x minus a. Is that true? Right, because the only algebra you guys can do is to subtract those fractions. Is that right? Okay, now you might say, okay, Mr. Judge, what's going on with this now, this derivative definition here? All right, limit. x goes to a. Um, use the algebra again this is going to be, so let me, let me do my algebra separately here, okay, for you. Here's the algebra. So we have a minus x over ax divided by x minus a. And what do you end up with? a minus x over ax times 1 over x minus a. So now you say, hey, Mr. Judge, okay, I get it, I get it. What's going on here? What kind of algebra do you guys think I can do now? Anybody know? What kind of algebra do we have? What is it? Isn't that A minus X? What's this going to be? 
That's going to be what? Negative x minus a. Cancel, cancel, and what do you end up with? Negative 1 over ax. So your algebra here, ladies and gentlemen, is what's happening there, right? So you get to replace that fraction with this negative 1 over ax. So now that limit here, as x goes to a, is really negative 1 over what? ax. So what happens now with this particular limit? Do you guys know what you can do with this limit? What can we do with this limit now? Direct sub, thank you. So by direct sub, what do we mean by that? By direct sub, you see this A, we plug in A there. What do you end up with by direct sub? Isn't this negative what? By direct sub, we get negative one over what? A squared. Now this is your derivative here. So that's the derivative at any a. However, you might say, what do you mean at any a? Well, what's the problem with this function here? a cannot be what number? Zero. Why can't a be zero? Down here, a can't be zero. Is that true? f prime of a equals minus 1 over a squared. All right. So you might say, what does that have to, what does that really have to do here with this question here, right? Right, is that function exists at zero here? We got a problem here. What does that even mean? Here's your formula for a derivative, but a can't be zero. So how am I going to look at this definition here around zero here? You guys know? How do we do that? Well, we're going to see soon, I guess. We'll see soon. We might have to see another definition. But if you, you, you already know, there has to be a problem. Excuse me. There has to be a problem here. Maybe there's a problem here, too, and a problem here, too, right? And you, got, you, you guys can see we got some issues at those vertical asymptotes. You got to figure out how to find out whether that limit exists here. But I just want to kind of share with you guys. Let's get let's use some of that um, differentiability definition here, okay? Because there are some other formulas here that we can get, and in the future we're gonna. Well, I should say this is by definition. In the future we're gonna learn formulas. So we're going to get back to this question out of vertical asymptote. You guys have a problem. You, you can't find the derivative out of vertical asymptote, but I'll prove it more formally. But we're just going to kind of look at these things that I shared with you guys yesterday. Okay. Um, another function here, to make that simple, we've seen a linear function. What if they give you a nice quadratic function here? Okay. Can you find the definition here in general? Right. What about f prime at what? At A, find the formula. Can I find that definition? Okay. What do you think we do now? Generally speaking. F prime of A will be, again, the limit as X goes to A, F of X minus what? F of A over what? X minus A. Mm -hmm. All right, so how do we handle this by definition of a derivative? Do you guys know? It's a limit question. So what's the function here? Do you guys know what the function is? Right, your function is... This is the f. 
it is x squared plus 1. And then we have to subtract. What do we subtract here? Right? You might say, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll make this a color here. Oops. We'll get the highlighter out. We'll put it as a nice what? Color. Plug in what? A. And what do you end up with? A squared plus 1. Is that true? If you plug in A? All right. And then you're going to divide by. What do you guys divide by? X minus A. Let's find those derivatives here because we're going to get back to those important questions. So now you might say, okay, let's clean this up. Using a little algebra here, what do you end up with? Isn't this what? X squared plus 1 minus a squared minus 1 over, over what? X minus A. What do you end up with now again, ladies and gentlemen? What's that limit? X goes to A. You're going to end up with X squared minus what? A squared over X minus A. Is that true? All right, just looking at your definition. Now, if you, if you do what? What do you guys do now with this? Do you guys know what you guys do? Well, you do direct sub, right? So you say, if I do direct sub, what do I get? A squared minus A squared over A minus A gives you zero over what? Zero, and you now have what? Indeterminate what? Form. So if you get indeterminate form, what's your issue again? You get to use some what? Algebra. Algebra. So by al using algebra, what does that give you now? Using algebra. Limit. X goes to A. What's this? X plus A. X minus A. Everything over X minus A. So do you guys see how that's very similar? You got to use some what? Algebra. So now you have that limit. X goes to A of x plus a and what do you get now here this is going to be what a plus a better known as 2a so you have this f prime a equals 2a and there it is so there is your formula pretty easy all right, let's do some more. So we're going to get our, our juices flowing here by using that uh, formula here, that definition, because we're, we're diving deep into derivatives. And, um, but this is kind of where it starts. You say, what does it start with? The definition of what a derivative is, and it's really a limit. But it's going to be a limit that's in indeterminate form, which will require you to use some algebra. And the algebra can be different depending on what the, the, what the function is. So let's give you guys another, let's give you guys an easy one. Okay, it's an easy one. You say, what is so easy? Uh, what if the function they gave you is just a constant like pi? It could be any constant. Okay, um, let's find the derivative. So you say, here's my what? Let's get the definition. F prime at what? A is the limit. X goes to A. And what is this? F of X minus F of A over... Over what? X minus A. So here's my limit. X goes to what? A. What's your function? Pi. What happens when you put A in? What do you get? Do you guys know what this is? Isn't that minus what? Pi, because it's a constant over x minus a. Okay. Limit as x goes to a. What is pi minus pi? Isn't that what? Zero. zero. What's the limit of zero? Anybody? What's that limit? Zero. Oh, isn't that going to be zero? Yeah. Okay. 
So the derivative at that point is actually going to be what? Zero. So I'm just going to kind of share with you guys some, some examples here of using that particular definition here. Okay, we can do a lot of different examples. Should we do some more? Did I give you guys that that, that derivative uh, sheet there? If you're, what if your function is maybe x cubed minus two now, and you want f prime a? So f prime a will be what? The limit x goes to a f of x minus f of a over x minus a. Okay? Just diving deep into derivatives. f prime a, well, it's going to be a limit again. What's your function, ladies and gentlemen? And that x cubed minus 2. And then what happens when you plug in a what? An a, what happens here? Minus, what's this? a cubed minus 2. And that's over x minus a. You guys okay with that? All right, you guys okay with that? Here's the deal. x cubed minus 2 minus what? a cubed plus 2, everything over x minus a. Okay, what happens with these twos? x cubed minus a cubed over x minus a. Is that true? Don't you get those twos going away? Okay, so I'm just sharing with you guys here. That's the derivative definition. We got to, you know, we got to start to immerse ourselves with that, you know. Um, and then we move on from that definition to formulas, okay? Because some of you guys may already know, is there an easier way to do this? And I'll say, yeah, there's an easier way to get derivatives. There certainly is. Uh, and we'll get there. But it starts with what? The definition. You guys have to, it's kind of like you have to earn it and understand it, and then you get to go there, you know. Um, well, it's not a trick, but it's a, it's a rule. There's, a, there's, a, there's more. I'm, like, if I look at this, I'll tell you, it's kind of interesting uh, as I get older, I'll probably forget my name. You know, but I can look at a function. I'll tell you what the derivative is. So I can I know the rules though. I know the properties and I know the rules. I know them very well. But and it's I can look at that. I'll tell you what the answer is. It's gonna be three x squared. Let's see. What would you guys do now? Use what again? Direct what? Sub. What happens if you plug in that a value for x? What do you think you end up with? a cubed minus what? a cubed over a minus a right over here. And what does that give you? 0 over 0. And what is that? Didn't we say you, you're going to usually end up with indeterminate? Not usually. You always end up with indeterminate. Always, ladies and gentlemen. When you use the definition here for some of these functions there. And then you always use what again? The algebra, always. And then you might say, well, how does that algebra look? Well, it depends on what you have, okay? Like, for example, you got x cubed minus what? a cubed. This is over. x minus a. And then... What do you do? You factor. How do you factor that numerator? It's the difference of perfect what? Cubes. Is that true? Okay. So then that's going to be, factor it out. X minus A times what? X squared plus AX plus what? A squared. And then this is going to be over X minus what? A.
All right, you guys with me on this one? Pretty good? So what goes on with the cancel this out? What do you have left? X squared plus AX plus what? A squared. So now we're going to take this limit. X, uh, X goes to A of X squared plus AX plus A squared. This is your F prime of A. Now, what do you end up with here? You're going to get what? A squared plus a times a plus a squared what is this a squared a squared a squared what do you guys end up with now what is this 3a squared so ladies and gentlemen f prime of a equals what 3a squared so what we're sharing with you guys here is this is going to be you know important in our future right this is a formula. This is for NEA value now. Um, and I want to give you guys a note because sometimes in the book they'll say, okay, use the definition and come up with a formula. Well, your function is in terms of X. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah. That's in terms of X. They may want a formula now in terms of X as well for that derivative. So here's your X and here's your X. So you can change the variable now, and now you can say, you know what? The derivative of the function is now 3x squared. It's another function, but in terms of the, the variable x now. So, you know, they just change the variables at the end. And so, like I said to you guys, I can look at this function and tell you the derivative. It's 3x squared. And you might say, well, how did you do that? Well, there's going to be a rule you can use, a shortcut, I should say, but you do have to go through the definition because you got to learn what differentiability is and um, and you kind of know because it's a limit, but you know it has a lot of other physical meaning, you know, a lot of deep physical meaning, but this is only one layer of it. It's multi-dimensional. Choosing the definition. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I kind of question, should I kick it up? I might kick it up on you guys on this one. You know, I might kick it up a little bit. Let me see if my notes if I should kick this up. I might kick it up. Let's say, for example, you got a function like x to the one third power. Let's see if I could kick it up. See if I can remember how to do this. I might not. It might be too early for me. And then we want to find the derivative, right? You want to find f prime at a. So let's use our definitions. Limit x goes to a f of x minus f of a over over what? x minus a. Limit x goes to a. You're going to get what? x to the one-third minus a to the one-third over what? Over, I'm sorry, x minus a. I'm jumping the gun here, okay? This will be over what? x minus a. Okay, let me go back. So now that we use that definition, what do we do now at this point? You guys remember? What do we do? We use what? Direct sub. Good. So there we go. So let's plug in that what? A here. And what do you end up with? Don't you end up with what? What is this? A to the one-third minus... A to the one third over A minus A. What does that give you? You guys know? Zero over zero. And determine it.
So then you say to me, oh, Mr. Judge, how do we handle this particular question now when it's indeterminate? What do you guys have to go back here again? Okay? You're going to have to go back here and do what? You're going to have to use some what again? Some algebra, right? So you might say, what's the algebra? X to the one-third minus what? A to the one-third over x minus a. So I'll let you guys look at this one and you go, oh my god, what do we do with that? How do I handle something like that? Okay. Does anybody know, how do we, how do we deal with this one? Mm. I, I'm, be, I'm willing to bet, ladies and gentlemen, something here for you guys. Let me give you a hint, okay? I'll give you guys a hint. I'm willing to bet something here. I'm willing to bet. 3 over 3, 3 over 3. You might look at this and you might say, wow, what's the story? Well, believe it or not, and if you said, you know, Mr. Judge, I don't know what, what's going on at this point. I don't blame you because when I was a, a calculus student with this, I didn't know what to do at this point either. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to express this to you guys. You're going to start to see some things maybe that look a little bit, they're new to you. Um, like if I went back over here, one of the problems I did, I didn't really mention it, but when we factored out a negative, do we factor out a negative? Yeah, you see up here, you factor out a negative. Well, you actually see that in pre-calculus or even in intermediate algebra. You can factor out a negative, right? I'm talking about right up here, a minus x is negative x minus a. You factored out a negative 1. So there are going to be some things that we learn in terms of algebra that we might have never seen, um, and this is one of them. This is one. So, you know, I mean, so sometimes, you know, instructors or even in your book, it'll be there. You go, wow, what do I do now? Not sure. So what you do is, this is actually a difference, excuse me, of perfect cubes. Let's write this down. This is a difference of what? Perfect cubes. And I don't know, uh, maybe I can convince you. You know what, maybe I'm going to think about a way to do that. How about if I do something like this? Let me convince you that that's a, uh, a difference of perfect cubes. What if I say I'm going to let T be X to the one-third, and we're going to let maybe S be A to the one-third. Are you guys okay with that? Just focus on that denominator, that difference of perfect cubes. So... What you're really saying in then is um, this x cube, this is going to be a what? Cube over cube. What is that going to be? That's going to be what? T cube minus what? S cube. Is that true? Maybe you say, I don't even know. I'm going to share with you guys. Okay, let's do every gory detail. Every gory detail. This is going to be what? X to the what? One third cube 
minus, what's this? A to the one-third cubed. Okay, and that's going to be now t cubed minus what? S cubed. So do you guys believe me now if I say that's the difference of perfect cubes? you guys believe that now? Can you factor this? T minus S, T squared plus what? AT plus S squared. Are you guys okay with that one? So I just changed the variables to share with you guys this difference of perfect cubes now. So what does that mean you really have? Do you guys know? Well, it means you really have this. Isn't this going to be what? T minus S. So what is T? This is X to the minus one-third minus, that's going to be A to the one-third, okay? Is that right? You guys okay with that? All right. And then that makes, means you have what? x to the two-thirds plus, oops, that's st. All right. So you're going to say x to the one-third, a to the one-third, plus what? a to the two-thirds. Is that true? Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. So here's what we're getting at, okay? This is something you may not have ever seen before. And this is one. Okay, let me let me go back. I'm going to really emphasize. X minus A is what? x to the one-third minus a to the one-third, and what do you end up with? That's factoring this out as a difference of perfect cubes. You may have never seen that before in your life. And if you have it, that's okay. Okay, because you're here to do what? You're here to learn. Are you here to learn? So I learned how to do this. Now it's your turn. That's all. <laughs> all right, anyway. Okay, so what do we do then? We replace this here. Remember, these are with powers one, right? So here's what happens. X to the one-third minus what? A to the one-third over x to the one-third minus a to the one-third times, times what? x to the two-thirds plus x to the one-third, a to the one-third plus a to the two-thirds, ladies and gentlemen. And sure enough, what do you guys see canceling? This one. So now you end up with one over, ladies and gentlemen, one over what? x to the two-thirds plus x to the one-third, a to the one-third plus that a to the two-thirds. That's what we're going to have to take the limit now as x goes to what? a. By definition. So you may not have ever in your life seen that factorization. I understand that. I haven't either. But this is a very special problem. Okay, this is a very, very special problem. And we're, I'm doing it for a reason. Anyway, what are you guys free to do now? Now use your what? Direct sub. What happens when you use direct sub now? What do you get? 
This is 1 over now what? A to the 2 thirds plus A to the 1 third, A to the 1 third, A to the 2 thirds. And what does that even give you now, ladies and gentlemen? Remember, this portion here now, what does it mean you have now? This is now A to the what? 2 thirds. So this is 1 over what? 3a to the what? 2 thirds. Okay, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yes. So like I said, and of course, you might even say, but Mr. Judge, I see this derivative. And a is in the denominator. I'm going to write this down. a can't be what? a can't be 0. Is that true? So I'm just going to say, I'm going to mention that to you guys now, because all of these little details I'm mentioning are going to be issues for us in the future. You know, Not today, but I'm going to just talk about some of these things for you guys for your future here. Okay, This is going to be an issue, because this is a very special example. It's a very special example. You might say, what is this an example of? Well, this is an example of this, this function is not differentiable at zero. A can't be zero. Just like the original function I showed you guys to start the conversation with. This original function is not differentiable at zero either. You say, why? Remember, we're saying this. This is not going to be differentiable at zero. So I just gave you guys some of those notes there to start talking about these little details. But you got to know the definition of derivative and get a good feel before you move forward. And that's all. Um, so we're working just with the definition. How do you guys... You can kind of relax about that, but there's there's other situations we're going to look at in detail about being differentiable. But I want you guys to first be able to know how to do a what? Use that definition, okay? You guys see what I'm saying? We're going to use that. I'm just looking for my... Derivative definition. Oh, let's do some more. How about this? Uh, I don't want to do... Which ones did I do? I gave you guys the odds. Is that right? I think I did. Remember that definition? You remember that uh, worksheet I put in the homework? I think it was over the odds, wasn't it? Okay, so we'll do some evens to give you guys some more. Here's, a, here's, a, here's another example here. Okay. We're going to find f prime of a. limit as x goes to a, this is what? f of x minus f of a over x minus a. So, okay, let's use the definition, right? So we're going to practice that. Here's the limit. X goes to A. Now, F of X is already given, so that's going to be what? Square root, what's this? X plus 3 minus square root of what? A plus 3. Everything over X minus A. So when you use direct substitution now, right, you're going to use direct sub. If we use direct substitution now, what do you think we end up with? All right, let's see what we get. What's this? A plus 3 minus A plus 3 over A minus A. What does that give you? Zero over what? You're always going to get, right? You're always going to get what situation here? An indeterminate form. You're always going to get that 0 over 0. Now, here's the point. 
and let me give you everything else. I'm gonna have, I didn't put the limit here. So now, what's the deal here? What are you gonna do now? You know, use what? Use what? Algebra. Not there. Sorry, not there. But where? Up here. All right, so let's take a look at the algebra in this case. What do you think the algebra is going to be now for us? Anybody know? Can you factor? Actually, no. I mean, I don't. you can't factor. What do you guys think? What's the algebra going to be? Well, um, in, my, in my mind, here's, what, here's what really what happens, right? As we go through some of these various examples, I would say there's kind of family of questions. You say, what do you mean family of questions? If you're ever going to have a square root, you do the same thing. If you ever have, um, you know, uh, qu uh, quadratics, cubics, you do the same thing. This one here, you're going to do, you're going to use what's called the conjugate. Okay? So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by a irrational what? Conjugate. So you have the square root what here? X plus 3 plus the square root of A plus 3. Square root of X plus 3 plus the square root of A plus 3. You say the conjugate of what? The conjugate of this difference of rationals. Okay, right in here. Oh, looking for a highlighter. You're going to use the conjugate right in here. Now it's going to be plus. All right. What do you think you're going to end up with if you use the conjugate? Do you guys know? The top, you're going to use FOIL, algebraically speaking. The top is FOIL. So you end up with x plus 3 minus what? a plus 3. Over, we're just multiplying our fractions there, okay? The denominator, don't even multiply, ladies and gentlemen. What I mean by that is this. When you multiply fractions, don't you multiply how? Horizontal across this way? You guys know what I'm saying? There you go. But on top, you're going to have to what? Distribute. What do you end up with? X plus 3 minus A minus 3 over X minus A times the square root X plus 3 plus the square root A plus 3. And what do you end up with? x minus a over what happened that x minus a you still have the sum square root of x plus 3 plus the square root of what a plus 3 what happens now with these what this term doesn't it cancel so what you obtain by using algebra is what you guys see here. 
Okay, you guys see, this is what's going to happen. The problem's going to go away when you use that algebra. And that's going to happen every time for that radical function, so you guys know. All right, now take the what again? The limit. So you say, okay, f prime of a, that's the limit as x goes to a of what? 1 over square root x plus 3 plus square root what? a plus 3. Apply the what? Now apply your direct sub. What do you get when you use direct sub now? You're going to use direct sub. What do you guys get? Plug in the a value. What do you end up with? 1 over what? Square root. A plus 3, square root what? What does that give you? 1 over, what is this? 2 square root what? A plus 3. F prime A. <sighs> All right. Anybody have any questions on that one? So every time you have a square root, what's the story? You're going to use that conjugate every time. Okay, you guys okay with that one? Um, all right, let's try one more here. You guys ready? Should we try one more? I'm trying to look at this sheet here. You say... What sheet am I looking at? Let's go back. Even though I started with that sheet, I'm really looking at this right here, okay? Definition of derivatives. Remember, I even asked you guys to do what here? Well, here's the video of the odds. GoPro. Go away. 75 cents. Oh, do I have to watch video? Hey, isn't there a way to turn that off? Huh? But I don't have it monetized. How come they. Wow, I got 140. Wow. 2.1 Q. 2.1 followers, 2,000 followers. Anyway, looks pretty good. Our prices, uh, come on. Yeah, it's not monetized. It can't be. Oh, okay. You got some. You got some videos there, ladies and gentlemen. What do you guys think? Wow. Why am I even here? I should be at the beach or something. You guys just said, watch the video. You know, you know that you know it's really popular right now. Those courses online, you guys know that very popular, very popular. Some of those instructors, man, their whole schedule is online, asynchronous, and they just have you watch their whatever it is. I guess you say, why don't why don't I do it? Because, ladies and gentlemen. There are two types of people in this world. Those who work and those who don't. <laughs> if you ever go to work, anybody here go to work later? Good. If you don't, good. Just be a student. But if you have to go to work, do you ever notice anything at work? Are there people that work and then are there some slackers? Huh? They hide in the break room? Uh, it's every workplace. It doesn't matter where you're at. It, you know, you say, God, oh, Mr. Judge, they're slackers. Every, it doesn't matter the, the field you're in, wherever you go to work. You have people who work, and then you have some slackers. Just the way it is. So they hide in the break room? In the bathroom? In the bathroom? Yeah. They get away with that? I mean, yeah, I do my yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's keep it that way, man. You know what I mean? Because I'm telling you. Ooh. That's how you do it. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, I, I'm just not used to the idea of getting paid and not, how can I put it, and not working. That just, I can't deal with that. If you said, you're going to get paid to not work, 
I can't handle that. It's weird to me. It's so foreign to me. I just can't. It doesn't feel right. It feels like the universe is going to explode. <laughs> it might anyway, but I don't, know if, I don't know if you guys feel that way. Um, so let me give you guys, you guys want to try a cubic maybe? Ooh, you're going to do some algebra. But the point I want to make to you guys is use the definition here. Because every one of these class of questions, the algebra is the same. That's good. So you don't freak out and go, oh, my God, what? It's all random. Every different question is a different kind of algebra. No. Every class of question might be a different set of algebra, like cubics and square roots and, you know, linear equations and constants, whatever. Um, and even some of the rationals. It's, it, but it's all following this very formal definition. And we just... We're getting our feet wet with that definition, okay? And then, remember, we're going to transition to using formulas. The formulas were proven by using the definition, though. They're kind of thought of as shortcuts. But you do got to review that algebra to start to, 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 you know, oh, what do I want to say? Just to try to get your juices flowing, I guess. All right, what's the function? x cubed plus x, right? And that's a minus, by the way. And then plug in the a value, you get a cubed plus what? a. And that's x minus a. All right, you guys okay with that? Did we do a cubic already? We might have. What do you guys do here? You distribute, right? So you get your x cubed plus x minus what? a cubed minus a, everything over what? X minus A. Okay, I think we're okay. Hold on, I'm just kind of... I guess that's it. Do, do we make a mistake anywhere? I don't know why I'm... I think we're good. Is that right? Okay, you want to use what now? What do you end up getting by direct sub? A cubed what? Plus A minus what? A cubed minus A over... A minus A, what do you end up with? Zero over zero. Isn't that indeterminate? You go, ah, oh, Mr. Judge, that's indeterminate. It's indeterminate then. All righty, so where are we at here? Okay. So then go back up here. And you say, Mr. Judge, what do I do now with this? Use what again? Algebra. So, x cubed plus x minus a cubed minus a, everything over x minus a. So I'm looking at this, and i got to figure out what kind of algebra do I use? What's our time? What's our time like? Okay. Okay, so what's, kind of, what's the only algebra you guys think you can do? I see the only thing you can do here. Let me rearrange my terms, okay? Okay, let's rearrange my terms. The only algebra I see here we can do is where? There, okay? So that's going to be now x minus a, x squared plus ax, plus a squared, plus x 
minus a, everything over x minus a. And then you go, oh, I see a little bit more what we can do. What can we do here? Did you guys see anything here? What could you factor out? Yeah, I, I'm going to put this as a 1 so you guys can see it better. You can factor out the what? x minus a. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Isn't that nice? It's a, that's a nice one. You got cancellation, ladies and gentlemen. So the algebra did come through. It will, by the way. And now you can do the limit. Say, what's that limit as x goes to what? A. What do we end up with? Something's bothering me. There should be a 1 somewhere. Yes. This should be a 1. I apologize. Okay. There should be that 1 there. All right. So you get what? A squared plus A times A plus A squared plus 1. What do you end up with? 3A squared plus 1. So f prime a gives you that nice what? 3a squared plus 1. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. And, you know, remember, they will sometimes say to you the following here, right? They sometimes say this. Give me a formula not in terms of a, but in terms of x. What do you think they mean by that? Replace, yes, replace the A with what? X. X. They mean the same yeah, and you might say, why do they do that? Do you guys know why they do that? No, it's not to trick you at all. You know why they say change it from A back to, back to X? You guys know why? Um, because you were used to looking at functions. Like, in other words, a derivative could now be thought of as another function. And we're used to looking at functions in terms of the variable x because when you graph now, you go, we graph y versus x. We don't say y versus a. Now we could, but, you know, it's to go back to the, the common notation. So your function, original function f, is x cubed plus x. But its derivative now is going to be what? Is 3x squared plus 1. Okay? So... You know, I'm just kind of looking through this sheet, or at least I, I was, and uh, what is it, differentiability, I'm looking at the derivative sheet, what are the questions there? Um, you know, you could go through, I don't know, I might even change it back to just, what, 17 in Canvas here, all right? I'm going to look at that homework, 261. Assignment one, I might just adjust it. It is adjusted. Uh, so I'm, I might adjust things. I'm going to see what's going on there. Okay? So that differentiability derivative, we'll set one to 17 odd. And so it just depends on how many of these, how deep do I really want to go, in all honesty, into that definition is when I'm really debating with myself how deep, you know? Um, did we have we gone deep enough? Maybe, um, maybe we have. So that now I can focus a little bit more on the the meaning of differentiability. In other words, focus a little bit more on um, answering some of these kind of questions. I guess you know, really talking about this. Maybe I'll talk about this in detail tomorrow, um, and I can adjust the study guide if I need to. But um, just communicating with you guys how I'm thinking. I, I got to talk about some of these issues here, you know, like differentiability not being differentiable at zero. We didn't prove that. Not being differentiable at zero. Not being differentiable at vertical asymptotes. I gotta, I'm going to show you guys that. Not being differentiable at corners. There's a corner. Not di oh, there's another corner. Follows the definition. There is here... There's no jump. Where's the jump discontinuity? Oh, I think that I, well, I was going to write it down. That's why I did that. I'll draw a jump discontinuity. Oh, we actually seen this one. You guys don't realize. Remember I gave you that x to the one-third? That's the cube root of x. That function's not differentiable at zero. You might say, why? You have that very special situation. 
You say, what's so special at zero? Do you guys see anything special at zero? Well, we're going to have to see what, what that means. So, you know, this isn't differentiable at zero. It's differentiable everywhere now. So it's called a vertical tangent. Um, it's really, this is some of the definitions what we'll go with. So this worksheet is to kind of just discuss um, where your functions are not differentiable. And this is a very other special aspect of differentiability that differentiability implies continuity, but not the other way around. So there's some, you know, there's, there's some under the hood, there's a deeper dive is what I'm saying. But you first want to start with, can you perform the definition? And then there's a, an equivalent definition. Um, I guess I'll show you to some degree. Um, and that might be the, most, the more useful definition for showing some of these kinds of things that we're talking about not being differentiable. You know, the H definition, those of you guys know what I'm talking about. The limit as H goes to zero. That's kind of more useful for some of the questions. But you first have to start with your first definition before you go to the H. Uh, and then you got to talk about, then you get to talk about geometrically speaking, what, is it, what does it really mean on the geometry of a curve, right? You're looking at, um, you know, a secant line becoming a tangent line. And then that's going to be something that makes sense here for this picture, that you have what's called a vertical tangent at zero, you know. So there's some more language, but you first got to clear out some of the me mechanics of it, get people comfortable. So if you've never seen again, you know, that function showing you, give me the general definition of a derivative. Yeah, that's a very special thing. I never seen it either. So the factoring technique I showed you guys here, and even the factoring technique, there's another one. This function is a very similar question. You know, x to the two-thirds, that one's similar. I didn't do that. It might even be in my video. But that's a special situation too. So anyway, so I might, like I said, I'm going to adjust things in a way that, um, you know, makes some sense. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Stay safe.